In this video, we are going to present Cognitive Radios, a new technology to improve flight safety and communications for unmanned aircraft systems. Unmanned aircraft systems are widely used by the military, but they have significant civilian uses such as science, public safety, business, and education. Unmanned aircraft systems need radio spectrum for remote command and control of the vehicle, as well as to support the payload. No spectrum is readily available, as all spectrum is already allocated for other uses. Though all spectrum is allocated, at any given time there are unused gaps denoted white spaces. The spectrum in these white spaces is what cognitive radio technology seeks to exploit. Cognitive radios can discover white space opportunities through spectrum policies. Spectrum policies are software rules that describe when, where, how, and by whom a spectrum band can be used. A cognitive radio can have many policies from which to choose based on the current situation. For example, a spectrum policy might specify a spectrum band that is available throughout the United States except for exclusion zones around existing users. A spectrum policy starts at a central spectrum manager such as the NTIA or the FCC. This policy may not be assigned directly to an end user. Rather, it may be delegated to another authority who subdivides the policy, which is further delegated, eventually creating a policy that the end user downloads from a database. In this way, the burden for spectrum management can be distributed across several entities. In this example, a policy for 10 MHz of spectrum across the U.S. is given by NTIA to the FAA. The FAA, in turn, gives a 10 MHz subpolicy to the Denver airport for use around the airport. Denver Airport, in turn, gives a 1 MHz band of spectrum for an unmanned aircraft system to use during takeoff. To avoid false or modified policies, policies can be digitally signed so that end users can validate a policy's authority all the way to the original source. Unmanned aircraft systems need spectrum policies that consider the specifics of their operations. The policies that can be used vary with the phase of flight and must be able to encode three-dimensional volumes, such as for the airspace classes. Here, as shown in the top graph, the spectrum used changes as the aircraft goes from pre-flight to taxi to takeoff and en route. While en route, spectrum changes with location and avoids unexpected interference. During a mechanical failure, the aircraft invokes an emergency policy to maintain control until the aircraft lands. Policies allow aircraft operators to check in advance during flight planning whether sufficient spectrum is available throughout the flight. If not, they can seek out additional spectrum, change the timing or routing of the flight, or if necessary, scrub the mission altogether. To demonstrate the spectrum management and flight safety features of policy-based radios, we now show a prototype implementation. First we show how we author, upload, and validate policies. The computer on the left is a policy server database that stores policies for access by end users. The computer on the right launches a policy authoring tool. Here, policies can be created, specifying characteristics such as the frequency range and phase of flight. The policies are stored as XML-like files for ease of distribution and processing. Policies are cryptographically signed and sent to the policy server. We now show the role of spectrum policies during the flight planning process. Here we launch a flight planning tool. In this scenario, a Customs and Border Patrol flight starts at Grand Forks and flies a route along the northern border as is coded on the left. We center the map on the aircraft at the airport. We connect with the policy server to download a set of policies that can be used by this aircraft. Once downloaded, we can see when and where these different policies can be used and in what frequency bands. Now we start the flight planning simulation. The green shows that the aircraft has a valid spectrum policy. The darker green indicates when a new policy is used, such as here, where it transitions from pre-flight 
to taxi, and then to takeoff. As the plane climbs, it switches to yet other policies as needed. The plot below now shows the policy allowed frequency bands in green and the chosen band in yellow. As the aircraft starts its flight, it uses a wide, unlicensed band for flight planning and then switches to more restricted bands as it passes to more critical phases of flight. Cognitive radios can automatically navigate around unexpected interference in complex radio environments. They allow spectrum policies to be defined for critical situations such as emergencies. When spectrum gaps are found, policies can define fine-grained spectrum leasing arrangements for just the desired segment of the flight. These are examples of so-called dynamic spectrum management, which we now demonstrate. Here we show what happens when the aircraft encounters an unexpected interference source. Upon detecting the source, it automatically chooses another policy for uninterrupted communication. As it continues on its simulated flight along the border, it reaches a point where it has no policy to communicate. At the flight planning stage, the operator could seek additional policies or lease spectrum for this portion of the flight. Here, the operator downloads another policy and checks that it covers the area without spectrum. Now the simulation shows the spectrum gap is covered. The spectrum graph at the bottom shows how the radio automatically transitions to the new policy. In conclusion, Cognitive radios can contribute to unmanned aircraft operations in several ways. Cognitive radios enhance flight safety. They allow pre-planning of even complex communication scenarios. They provide more spectrum. They enable and encourage many types of spectrum sharing. Cognitive radios enhance spectrum management. They allow secure and distributed access to spectrum.